Jake here for American Trucks, and today I've got this Raptor style grill light kit with the amber LEDs fitting 2021 and newer F-150 XL and XLT models. Bring a little bit of that cool Raptor style to the front end of your F-150 with this grill light kit. This is a simple way to up your style game while providing some extra visibility out on the street or trail for the best price in the segment. If you like that Raptor look, but don't really want to spend Raptor money, well, these lights are an easy way to bring some of that style to your XL or XLT trim truck. The kit gives you this bracket with the three LED lights, and it mounts nice and stealthily behind the grill, making for a pretty well integrated look. Now, these are designed to function essentially as running lights as well. So when you get them wired up, they're going to come on as soon as you turn the key. So no need to worry about turning them on or off. They're just going to come on when you start the truck up. Now, of course, you can wire them in with a switch should you so choose, but that's going to be at your own discretion. Now, these bright LEDs are going to cast a good amount of light forward to help your truck be seen in adverse weather conditions or out on a dark trail. These are also weather sealed, so water and dirt is no issue should you happen to encounter some obstacles or some bad weather. Now, construction here is all first rate too. This bracket is made from heavy duty 12 gauge aircraft grade aluminum, and it's topped off with a nice wrinkle black powder coat finish. It also comes with stainless steel hardware already installed, and you've got some matching screws on this as well. So safe to say this is gonna be durable and last you a while. Now the bracket here does use factory mounting points, so there's no modification needed to your truck's grill, making this an easily reversible mod. And of course the LED lights are nice and bright, plus they're gonna last you a long time, so this is a pretty worry-free setup. And it already comes assembled just like this, so really all you've gotta do is run this little bit of wiring, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. Pricing is also a huge plus with this setup because at around $150, this is about the most affordable grill light setup on the market. So you're getting good looks, solid construction, and easy installation for an excellent price here. And speaking of installation, we're gonna give this a one out of three on our difficulty meter. It should only take you about an hour to install. Like I mentioned earlier, this all comes pre-wired. It's pretty much ready to go. So all you've gotta do is mount this bracket and run power and ground for it, making an easy job for the DIY mechanic to do at home. And with that, let's throw it over to one of our AT customers now, who's gonna show you how to get this installed on your truck. So these are all the tools that I use during the installation. Uh, I really only use this one for clipping a, a zip tie. Uh, this one, I only use the handle since it was rubberized for uh, using as leverage for prying. Uh, I use this, uh, this uh, plier for the uh, wire clamp. Uh, and I had two uh, ratchet wrenches, uh, an extension, a seven millimeter, eight millimeter, 10 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, a Phillips head screwdriver, and uh, found this handy. This is a uh, extendable flashlight that's also magnetic on the end. I used that a few times to, to see what I was looking at. And then I also used the uh, clip push pin uh, pry tool. So this is the uh, the install for the 21 to 23 Ford F-150 Raptor style grill light kit and these are amber. This is what comes in the box. You've got your zip ties and your electrical clamp, a couple of screws, and the light bar. with the wiring harness already attached. So first thing I did was throw down a uh, painter's cloth or you could throw down some kind of a towel or blanket just to keep anything that's falling down from bouncing away from you. Or uh, We're gonna be taking off some of the pieces on the front. So if we need a place to lay them down, we can lay them down right in front of the truck on top of the cloth. So first thing we're gonna do is Open the hood of the truck, make sure it's secure, which on the 23s they are secure on their own. Um, we're going to remove the black plastic radiator cover, which is right here. And the panel is attached by 14 plastic clips. 
and uh, let's see, we'll fry those up with, uh, I've got a clip frying tool and you don't necessarily have to have that. I think if you wanted to use a flathead screwdriver, you could probably get them up. It might be a little uh, more difficult. Um, but we'll we'll pry up all these all these plastic pins and we'll save them for later. These are uh, these are all pretty snug since the truck is quite new. <clears throat> uh, one thing I did read about was they can be a little easier to remove uh, if it's sitting in direct sunlight. So there's some heat getting to the, the plastics which can allow them to flex a little better. So this is the, there's a couple of pins, oh maybe it's not broken, this one's the same way. So this is the uh, air intake pins that you gotta take out. Just put those back together so I don't lose the pieces. So you'll see that I can pry up just on the top which relieves the, the grab it has from the rest of the pin. And once that part's up, you can grab the under part of this pin and pop it out. So right there, I used a little bit of leverage with my finger to pop that out. I've been starting to do that on these. It seems to be making it a little easier. Now, I think we are about free. We've got the uh, the top panel removed with the 14 plastic pins. So now I believe we can unplug the electrical connectors. There's two of them near the hood latch. Uh, we can use a flat head screwdriver to depress the clip on the smaller connector uh, and use a pry tool to remove the push pin holding the wire wiring in place. And I believe this is the push pin holding the wiring. So I'm just gonna try and press this and pull it out. That was pretty easy. And then uh, there's one down here. You can use a flathead or same pry tool if it works. And that did work. Next, we're gonna remove four bolts located below the radiator cover. Um, and these bolts will hold the grill and the active shutter system. I got a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet wrench, and I'm going to take off the four bolts. All right, we'll set, well, we have three of them. We'll set those aside until I find the other one that fell in. <clears throat> Once we get the grill off. So now we can remove uh, two screws that attach the bumper trim panel to the wheel well on each side of the truck. And I'll need a seven millimeter socket for that. So these are the two seven millimeter screws that we're gonna find on each side that we've got to take off. All right, next we're gonna remove the bumper trim panel. We'll start on one side of the truck and carefully pull the edge of the trim panel inside the wheel straight out. Uh, and there's clips holding the panel in place. So we'll hear some popping sounds as the clips disengage, which is normal. If there's a lot of resistance, we'll need to check and make sure that, uh, that the wheel well hardware has been removed.
water leaking out just because I washed the front earlier. Oh, well, there it is. <laughs> Pulling off that piece was kind of a surprise, so be careful with that one. I think um, hopefully that's the scariest part of the install is popping that off without dropping it on the ground and scratching it up or breaking it in half. So just uh, suggested to keep a wide stance on it when you're pulling it off so one side doesn't fall away from you. So the next step, we're gonna remove two eight millimeter bolts that are holding on the bottom part of the grill. There's one on each side. All right, now that we've got those off, <coughs> uh, let's see, the grill and the active shutters to the truck are both uh, loose. You can carefully remove the grill. Um, just uh, again check for any significant resistance to make sure all the hardware has been removed. Uh, sometimes grills get hung up on the gaskets and that run along, along the top of the bumper. Uh, the grill should pull outward and up slightly. And once again, it's that rubber on the bottom just kept holding me up. So. This uh, the most difficult part about pulling it off is this rubber piece on the top, getting this down so you can get past it. Um, other than that, it slides off pretty easy once all the fasteners are off. The next step is to make sure that you have a soft flat surface. So in this case, I chose some cardboard. And what we'll do is we'll take the grill over here and we'll turn it top down. And we're free. So now we can get this bottom panel off. Make sure you keep all your clips in one spot. You go fetch one. All right, let's take a look at the instructions for the next step, which is to sit the grill face down now, and we'll we remove the seven millimeter screw in the center of the grill, which is directly behind the board emblem. So now I've grabbed an extension for our seven millimeter so I can get to that center. All right, now we've got those four 10 millimeter nuts off. We'll place the grill top down again, and there will be three to five, so I guess we'll find out how many, large metal retaining clips that hold the shutters and grill together. And we'll need to release these clips in order to separate the grill from the shutter assembly. Uh, it's usually best to start on one end and work your way to the other. Release each clip assembly. It's usually best to start on one end and work your way to the other. I already said that top down again, you can see it's pretty loose at this point. These are the metal, three metal, uh, metal clips that we need to uh, release. So you're gonna get your finger here on the back of this metal clip, push down, and then it just pops right out the back. Go to the next one, push down, pops right out the back. The last one, get your finger down on that metal clip, push down. And while you're pushing down, pull the back away. And you'll see that here, the Ford, the Ford uh, symbol This on, the, on my truck has the uh, camera in it. So there's actually a wiring harness here that we need to uh, release to separate this. There we go. It just kind of pushed out on this, this uh, gray plastic clip, pushed downward and it kind of 
popped out or whatever seated. So what we'll do now is lay the grill face down after we get this shutter assembly out of the way. And now we can grab our light bar and then we'll, we'll position it in its final, final mounting spot and then we'll use these two screws that were that came in the package to uh, fasten it. So now we're going to fasten the light bar to the appropriate spot on the grill. And you'll see there's two holes at the top here and those line up with our, uh, our light bar. So we'll set that about where it goes. And what we need for these is a Phillips head screwdriver. So now I've got my Phillips head with my screw that's going to fasten this light bar into position. So now we're going to just make sure the screws are, are snug. But we're gonna now we're gonna be routing the wire towards the driver side. Uh, and then we'll reinstall the active grill shutters onto the back of the grill. And then uh, we'll finalize position of the wiring harness so it doesn't hang down. So we'll take off the, uh, the tie. We'll route this over to the driver's side. So we're gonna just kinda do the same thing we did before. And uh, We'll hold the grill up and kind of get it into position to where the bolts go through the holes on the side. So the wiring harness hookup for the camera on the front board symbol will go right back into this piece. If you come over on the other side, you can see from the top where you can just slide it back in. to uh, where it was sitting before. And you can hear it clip, and then it'll be ready for hookup once we get this back onto the truck. And as long as you see them come through, you're good to put the nut back on. And just to make it easier, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand tighten them on the, all, over, all the way around so it doesn't keep coming apart. All right, so now that we've got those four nuts just hand tight. I'm going to flip it back over to get to the bottom where we have our three clips. Make sure they're all seated. Now they're all seated. So there is a little bit of play there, but I think that's normal. Uh, so we'll flip it back over. I know we don't need to flip it over. Now what I'll do is I'll Use a wrench to tighten down all four of these bolts. So we'll tilt the grill back over so we can access where the uh, bolt goes down here for the back of the Ford. Just to make sure I'm not over tightening, just do it. So we'll get that back on here with the all the clips that we have. All right, so now we're ready to uh, get the grill back onto the truck. Just line it up as best you can. Back into the spot it was in. A line there, and then you've got two up top that go into the into their respective holes to make sure you're in alignment. We're gonna try to work it from one end to the other to get this clip back on. So what I'm just gonna do is wrap it around this side while keeping a kind of a wide stance hold on it. There we go starting to work its way back in. 
and then get these last few clips. Carefully snap them in. We don't want to over tighten any of these because we're most of these are just tightening on plastic, so we just need them snug. So now we've got to put these four bolts. These are all 10 millimeter. All right, now we've got all four 10 millimeter bolts back in. Now moving on to back to connecting these uh, electrical wires. Uh, as we had hooked back in before, the, the wire that hooks to the back of the forward symbol clipped back in here in the grill, and that we can now plug back in. And I just heard it and it's hanging in there. And uh, and then we have this other one, four pin, that we can plug right back in here. Make sure it's locked in. And then we got our uh, clip with our strap here for the wiring. You can shove that right back in there. We have the five large push pins on the outer edge of the grill, one, two, three, four, five. We can put those back in. Part of my organizational skills is using my pockets. And uh, that's so I don't kick stuff around. So I'm gonna take those out of my back pocket, just shove those back in. So now we're going to deal with the rest of the electrical part of the install. And uh, the direction said it's best to remove the air box to get back in here where your electrical parts will be hooking up. So I'm going to take this air box completely out just so we can see everything in here. Uh, so I used my pry tool to get these clips out just to get the wiring off the, the uh, intake box. So now that I've got that disconnected, I'm going to carry it out and set it down somewhere nice got a lot more space to work with and down here you will see that this is a 16 pin connector since I have the LED headlights and the wire that we'll be tapping into is the uh, blue wire with the gray stripe and as you can see, there is only one here that has blue and gray. So that should make it pretty easy to uh, make sure we're getting the right wire. So I need to go, I need to grab the uh, wire tap and snap it into place onto this wire. And then uh, from there, uh, we can route the, uh, the wiring from the, the light kit over to here over here and grab the the tap it's a red tap once you clap it down on the wire you have a, a slot here to put your uh, wiring clip from the, the light clip the light bar um, to clip it right into there and um, so let's get this on so I'm just gonna get the clamp like that kind of try and separate this wire from the others okay you can see it there there's a little notch that it holds on to to make sure that wire is not going to come off and then we now have access to the connection part of that clamp. So what we'll do here is take our lighting wiring and there's, I found a nice hole right here 
for us to come through to stay away from the radiator. We don't want it to be near all the heat, but it also gives us access to where we're hooking it up. So now I can take the end of the lighting kit and plug it right into the clamp. You can see it right here. I'm getting it right on the back there. And you should just hear a click sound and then it shouldn't come off very easily. So just wiggle it around there, make sure it's tight. And then the uh, ground, we're just gonna connect to any one of the grounds on the truck already. So uh, I'll just use this one. And um, I need to grab the wrench. Make sure you hold onto that screw, you don't wanna drop it. And then uh, we'll grab our ground and we'll put it through this screw. That's secured and snug. This is now clamped on, so we're going to test it, test it out at this point before we put everything back together just to make sure that we got everything hooked up correctly. That's something I always recommend is before you put everything back together, make sure everything's working as it should. And as you can see, they are working. So we did plug into the right wire and now we can put everything back together. And we'll just get them seated on there. And we can kind of work the hose in at the same time when this hole lines up with uh, where this bolt goes back in here. good there. Now we've got the intake we'll get back on over here with the rest of the clips and then that should be just about the end of the install unless we want to zip tie some in some different areas. I, I can see zip tying here probably being a maybe one of the only spots that will actually make sense just to keep the uh, wiring from slipping around. So I'm gonna grab a zip tie. So I'm gonna use one right here. And really, I'm not even worried about it being a tight. tight. Um, a little play is fine, as long as it's just keeping things uh, from moving around too much. And then if you want, you can clip these ends off. Okay, so we're gonna get these pins back in and uh, the, the three special pins we had uh, that were not broken, uh, we're gonna start with those. And two of them go into where the intake is. So you just seat them down and then push that to lock it in. And as you can see, that was a pretty easy. Here's the other one on the uh, intake. And this one um, is more of a slotted, but I think if we still get the screw up on top of it, it may hold a little better. We'll try. And none of, none of this, this part was not in the instructions, so this is just kind of um, figure it out as you go. So that's not really holding much, but it is sitting underneath the screw a little bit. So as you can see, it is a lot better than it was. So that's that's what we want. That's gonna do it here for our review and install of the Raptor style grill light kit with the amber LEDs, fitting 2021 and newer F-150 XL and XLT models. Thanks so much for watching. And remember for all things F-150, be sure to keep it right here at americantrucks.com.